You know, I always thought that Goldilocks and the Three Bears was just a cautionary tale, and then I went to college. You ever just walk back to your room and found someone that you didn't know lying in your bed? Because I sure have. If you thought crazy stuff only happened to me when my family was around, you'd be sorely mistaken. I've always been a magnet for crazy, especially during the school years. So let me explain. In college, Basically, everyone in the dorm gets the same, like, uncomfortable bed, what have you. My family came in and they brought me a mattress pad. And that made my bed the most comfortable bed in the entire dorm. Maybe uh, on all of campus. I, I don't know what that mattress pad was made out of, but everyone slept on my bed. Now, this one time we were having a hall meeting and my RA and my RM, because I was in a because of FYI, we have an RA and an RM. RM is the resident mentor and RA is resident advisor. That kind of deal. So you have two, basically. And our RM, one time after a hall meeting, she was like, what are you going to do after this? And I was like, I don't know, maybe not go back to my room because there's two girls sleeping in my bed and I'm not in it. And she was like, there's always people in your bed. And I'm like, I know! And then I threw her again, you know, the usual. <sighs> Speaking of my RA freshman year, I hated her. I hated her because we always kept our door open, me and my roommate. And the girls next to her were always loud and fighting with their boyfriends. And their male friends would come over and scream at them. And because our door was open and they were friends with the RA and we were not, she would come over and scream at us for being too loud. We'd be like, what the fuck? We're just, we're just sitting here. Like we'd be reading books with the door with the door open and she'd come over and scream at us for being too loud. And I was like, the fuck? Why? Obviously that wasn't us. Did that sound like us? Because I'm pretty sure you could hear us. That that didn't sound like us. And the one time I got locked out as a freshman, the one time, was when I found out my RA, who I thought was just a very angry lesbian, like, I, I went to New Paltz, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of gay people in New Paltz, like, it's, 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 it's like a safe haven in New York, like, New Paltz is, really really well known for its gay community and i thought my ra was the angriest lesbian i'd ever met in my entire life and the one time i got locked out was my roommate was home he, he had gone home for the weekend and i came out of the i came out of the door to go to the bathroom and it was like i don't know one in the morning give or take and i opened my door to, to go to the bathroom and i see my ra arguing with her boyfriend who she had just apparently broken up with and i see this it registers in my head. I'm like, holy shit, you're not a lesbian. And my door closed and I was like, fuck. And that was the one time I got locked out when I discovered my very angry RA was in fact not a butch lesbian. Who also happens to now be the RD, the resident director of my dorm. Like, that's interesting. I wonder if she, you know, hates a lot more people besides me and my roommate at this point. But no. Let me tell you, the weirdest story by far, and the person on the other side of the story, uh, she 100% denies that this ever happened. You see, uh, this one time I came into my room, found someone asleep, and like, it, it's normal. People I don't know, I, I guess my roommate invited them, or they'd heard that my bed was comfortable, and I just walked into my room, and I actually made quite a few friends with people just because, you know, I walked into my room and they were asleep in my bed, and I'd be like, Oh. Okay. Alright. Just leave my own room because someone was asleep in my bed and I don't want to wake them up. Um, but this one time, walked into my room and it was by far the weirdest experience I'd ever had with, you know, walking into my room and having someone talk to me because this story was just off the wall. And you ever just had someone tell you a story and the entire time they're telling it, you just stare at them like this? So the girl wakes up and she starts to tell me about her past relationship. She was dating a dick, yes, but she really liked to suck dick and she was really close to this guy. So after they broke up, he would come over and she'd be like, I know we broke up and all, but I still like to suck you dick. Just be gentle about it this time, you dick. And he'd be like, okay. And then he started to jam his dick down my throat and I was choking on it, but he wouldn't stop. And I was like, oh, trying to tell him that it was, I was uncomfortable, but he wasn't listening. And, oh, oh, oh. You know, just when there's just way too much information. Just way too much information. 
Now, in addition to the, uh, the the paintball run, as we'll call it, of the Laundry King, uh, there were other there were also really awesome things going down in my in my on my side of the hall. I don't know too much about what happened on the other side of the hall, but on my side of the hall, FYI side, we had some fun stuff go down. Now, another time, I heard a commotion in the hallway. I came out, and when I opened my door, that that one time it wasn't open. Technically, we were not supposed to have our doors open. Like, we're, we're not supposed to... You think in a program that's designed to help people who have trouble dealing with, you know, social situations and making friends and stuff, they'd strongly encourage you to keep your doors open. However, they did not. Apparently, they were saying it was a hazard or whatever for our doors to always be open. I'm like, uh, I'd think if the room was on fire and I wanted to run out of it, I'd be much happier with the door open as opposed to the door closed, but... Whatever. Maybe they just want us all to burn alive. I mean, if one of you dies in the room, the other person gets straight AIDS, so it's, it's like insurance, I guess? I, I don't know. One time I walked down the hallway because there was a commotion going on, and I opened the door, and I just see a mattress run by, and there's a person behind it screaming, and I'm like, what? And I walk out of the little alcove, and I see in the hallway, their mattress jousting. Apparently this is a thing that I was not privy to as a child, because, you know, I... My family's well. I, I don't know if this if, if because we weren't weird, we didn't have this this ritual, or because there wasn't enough room or whatever. But apparently, mattress jousting is a thing where you pick up a mattress and you run at someone else and you slam into them and you you like see how far you bounce back and what have you. I guess you need a really long hallway. I didn't really have that as a kid. And I wasn't gonna bring my mattress outside. Um, also, no upper body strength would be kind of hard for me to have carried a mattress as a child. But I digress. The person who had set this up, she's a really awesome girl. Um, and like, you ever just, you have that one girl that's in your group of friends that everybody likes, but you don't, and you don't get why, and you're just like, no, I don't understand. Everybody loved this one girl. I mean, she was awesome. Like, she was the most fun person ever. She's the one who, who started the mattress jousting thing before angry, what I thought was a lesbian RA came out and yelled at people and told me you couldn't do that. Um, but... This one girl on our floor had, you know, designed the, the, the settings. I think she even made brackets and shit for it. It was it's pretty I don't actually know how you win or lose mattress jousting. I think it's just all about the fun, really, isn't it? Someone, please teach me the rules of mattress jousting. Please? Please? But she had designed, she had set up everything, got the mattresses out, everyone was ready and playing, there were two teams, what have you. Uh, she was awesome. Everybody liked her on the floor except for me. Like I, I don't, I don't know why. I, 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 I didn't get it. Like I, I got that she was awesome and stuff, but I, 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 I didn't get it. I, I don't know why. I feel like I was the only person on the floor that was a dude that didn't want in her pants. Like I, I, I don't. Like she would even come to me because she knew that I didn't like her, and like asked me about the other guys on the floor. Like I, 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 I don't know. I just, I didn't get it. She's also super into Jesus. I did not know that. Nobody knew that in college. The moment we got out of college, she was like, praise the Lord. Like I praise the sun, praise the sun. She, she praises the Lord and, and she keeps telling me that if I'm lonely, I should go to church because it's a really good way to find a new girlfriend. And I'm like, mm, I don't think that's the way I'm going to find a new girlfriend. Mm, I don't think it's going to work for me. And I am so sorry to that girl roommate because okay so you're not supposed to have microwaves unless they're part of the micro fridges that you rent for the year and at the end of the semester that girl's roommate well she had snuck in a, a microwave at the beginning of the year and near the end of the semester when we had already turned in our uh micro fridges like the renting rental period was over i had a tv dinner or whatever and I was hungry and I wanted to eat it and she was only with the microwave. So I like knocked on the door. I was like, can I use your microwave please? And she was like, yeah, whatever, come on in. And I used it and the stench of that Salisbury steak TV dinner, like the entire floor smelled like dog food. I have never been so embarrassed. Like I've eaten rotten food before. If you know my mom, I've definitely eaten rotten food before. But I was so embarrassed at this TV dinner that smelled like dog food. Like, oh, like, oh, it was just the stench was just punching you in the face. It was so pungent. I am still sorry to this day 
that I asked if I could use her microwave that day. Oh my god, it smelled so bad! Now, remember how on that diagram, it's so weird because it's backwards, and you're like, whoa, what am I doing? No, no good. And that diagram is going to come back up. <laughs> Ow. You know how I wrote a fighting penguin and wolverine on it? Actually, I should be pointing over here, shouldn't I? Kind of. I wrote, like, a fighting penguin and wolverine there. Let me tell you a little bit about Wolverine. Now, you might know Wolverine by other names. Like, he's been on this channel before because his screen name is Smokestack Shirt. So we play a couple of Smash Bros. matches, like, way back in the day. Um, but we called him Wolverine as freshman because when he had sex, well, he's also kind of short, but when, when he had sex, he would grunt like Wolverine. He'd be like, rah, rah, rah. And this one time, Everyone in the hall heard it. Like, it was a thing. We'd all get together and be like, is Wolverine having sex? And then we'd all, like, stand outside his door. I mean, you didn't have to. You could stand anywhere in the hallway. And you'd hear, like, rah, 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 rah. And you'd be like, oh, oh, Wolverine's having sex. The X-Men are in there. And it was, like, our, our joke. And uh, his girlfriend I call partner. Um, but you're going to hear a lot about partner in a, in a later episode. Uh... But for now, just know that Wolverine was dating partner. And the girl that everyone liked on our floor, she was an art student. And she spent most of her time in the lounge painting because art students have so much work. I don't understand how art students get to do anything other than art when they're on campus. They have so much more work than everyone else. It's absurd. And she had her paintbrushes, she was doing stuff in the lounge, and then, you know, someone opened the lounge door and they were like, hey, Wolverine's having sex. And she was like, I got this. And she comes over, she has, she, she dips her, her watercolor paintbrush in red paint. She comes to the door and she's like, I know just what to do. She walks over to Wolverine's door and she draws three lines down it. Like Wolverine had actually slashed the, the door. And, rah, rah, rah. and we just like waited outside the room for one of them to come out of it. There was like maybe 10 of us just standing outside the door. And when Wolverine got up and opened the door, he's like, oh, hey guys, what, what, what's up? And then he sees us all laughing and he's like, I don't, what's, and he looks at the door. It doesn't register at first that we're making fun of him for being Wolverine. And then like you can see the gears are turning and then he's like, oh, Ha ha! And we just fucking lost it. Like our 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 side of the hall as a group lost it. It was perfect. Hey there, guys and gals. I hope you're enjoying season two on Fairy Tales: The School Years. Uh, as always, you can click the link on the left to see the previous episode, or you can click the link on the right to see the playlist where you can see all the episodes so far. Now you've heard about my hall, and you've heard about FYI. How about you guys take a listen about my room specifically freshman year? More than just the bed.